guys, Marco here from Aviator Life CS. Welcome back to my channel. And today we will continue reviewing the flight controls. And this is part three of the flight controls uh, system review. Today we are going to talk about speed brakes and flaps and slats. Let's start with the speed brakes. The speed brakes consist of fly spoilers and ground spoilers. Hydraulic system A powers all four ground spoilers, two on the upper surface of each wing. The speed brake lever controls the spoilers. When the speed brake lever is actuated, all the spoilers extend when the airplane is on the ground, and only the flight spoilers extend when the airplane is in the air. The speed brake's extended light provides an indication of a spoiler operation in flight and on the ground. You can see this light here. In flight, the light illuminates to warn the crew that the speed brakes are extended while in the landing configuration or below 800 feet AGL. On the ground, the light illuminates when hydraulic pressure is sensed in the ground spoiler shut off valve with the speed brake lever in the down position. If we talk about the in-flight operation, operating the speed brake lever in flight causes all flight spoiler panels to rise symmetrically to act as speed brakes. Caution should be exercised when deploying flight spoilers during a turn as they greatly increase roll rate. Moving the speed brake lever beyond the flight detent causes buffeting and is prohibited in flight. A lever stop feature is incorporated into the speed brake lever mechanism. The lever stop prevents the speed brake lever from being moved beyond the flight detent when the airplane is in flight with the flaps up. In the event of the loss of electrical power, the lever stop is removed and full speed brake lever movement is available. Now, if we talk about the ground operation, during landing, the auto speed brake system operates when these conditions occur. A speed brake lever is in the arm position, so you can see that position here. A speed brake arm light is illuminated. You can see this light here. Radio altitude is less than 10 feet. Landing gear struck compresses on touchdown. Now, this coming note is very important to know. It says compression of any landing gear strut enables the flight spoilers de to deploy. Compression of the right main landing gear strut enables the ground spoilers to deploy. Both thrust levers are retarded to idle. Main landing gear wheels spin up more than 60 knots. The speed brake lever automatically moves to the up position and the spoilers deploy. Note, following an all flap stop, no flap landing, the speed brake lever will not move beyond the flight tent and the spoilers will not fully deploy. If a wheel spin up signal is not detected, when the air ground system senses ground mode, any gear start compresses, the speed brake lever moves to the up position and fly spoiler panels deploy automatically. When the right main landing gear start compresses, a mechanical linkage opens the ground spoiler interlock valve and the ground spoilers deploy. If the speed brake lever is in the down position during landing or rejected takeoff, the auto speed brake system operates when these conditions occur. Main landing gear wheels spin up more than 60 knots. Both thrust levers are retarded to idle. Reverse thrust levers are positioned for reverse thrust. The speed brake lever automatically moves to the all position and spoilers deploy. After an RTO or landing, if either thrust lever is advanced, the speed brake lever automatically moves to the down detent and all the spoiler panels retract. The spoiler panels may also be retracted by manually moving the speed brake lever to the downed detent. So that's basically it for the speed brakes. Now let's talk about the flaps and slats. 
The leading edge devices and trailing edge flaps are high lift devices that increase wind lift and decreases the stall speed during takeoff, low speed flight and landing. Here you can see the trailing edge flaps. We have seen this picture before. I just wanted to show you again. And here you can see the leading edge flaps and slats on each side of the wings. The leading edge devices are the leading edge flaps, which have two positions, up and full extent, and the leading edge slats, which have three positions, up, extended, and full extended. Here you can see a nice picture of the leading edge flaps. The trailing edge flaps are double slot. Extension of the leading edge devices occurs in sequence with the movement of the trailing edge flaps. The leading edge devices and trailing edge flaps use hydraulic system B. The standby hydraulic system is the alternate source for extension of the leading edge devices. And an electrical motor is the alternate system for extension and retraction of the trailing edge flaps. When the flap lever moves, the trailing edge flap control and leading edge control operate and hydraulic pressure goes to the trailing edge drive unit and leading edge slats. The flap position indicator shows the trailing edge flap positions. Flap gates prevent accidental movement through position 1 during a single engine go around and position 15 during a normal go around. You can see those gates here for flap 1 and for flap 15. The flap limit placard shows the maximum speed for each flap position. You can see it here. The flap slat electronic unit or FSEU provides a trailing edge flap load relief function which protects the flaps from excessive air loads. This function is operative at the flaps 10, 15, 25, 30, and flap 40 positions. The flap lever does not move, but the flap position indicator displays flap retraction and re-extension. Indications for the leading edge devices are on the center instrument panel and the off overhead panel. So you can see it here. This is in the aft overhead panel, and this is in the center instrument panel. The leading edge devices and user panel shows the position of each leading edge flap and a slat. So here you can see leading edge flaps, two on each side, and the rest is for the slats. The leading edge flap transit and extended lights show the condition of the leading edge devices. So you can see those lights here. When all the lights are extinguished, the devices are retracted. The amber leading edge devices transit lights and leading edge flaps transit light illuminate when the leading edge devices are in transit or not in the correct position. The green leading edge devices extended or full extended lights illuminate when the leading edge devices are in the correct position. If pressure from the hydraulic system B, engine driven pump, is not sufficient, the power transfer unit, or PTU, uses hydraulic system A to pressurize system B for auto slat operation. And you can see the PTU here. When the flap lever is moved from the up position to the 1, 2, 5, 10, 15, or 25 position, the trailing edge flaps extend to the commander position and the leading edge flaps extend to the full extended position and the slats extend to the extended position. Now, when the flap lever is moved beyond the 25 position, the trailing edge flaps extend to the commander position and the leading edge flaps remain at the full extended position and the slats extend to the full extended position. The leading edge devices sequence is reversed upon retraction. So guys, with this one, we complete part three of the flight control system review. I hope you liked the video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed to my channel yet, please do it now and remember to hit the bell so you will know once we upload a new video. And if you think these videos could be useful for somebody else, please share them.
that's going to help me a lot to grow the channel. Next week, we will continue reviewing flight controls. Until then, guys, please take care and hope to see you soon.